You know there are good ideas. Some are creative and there are just great ones. Today you'll learn how to take a picture with any celebrity, why a smartphone is enough to make a movie, and how smart cats really are. Let's go. Hollywood has given the world many blockbusters in recent years, but hardly any of them have been as awesome as Titanic and I'm not even talking about plot acting grosses a number of awards. James Cameron did an amazing job. The dives to the wreck of the actual ship alone are so great, you know, that's not just your usual stroll to the store. And he also created numerous copies of the Titanic. The legendary ship was presented on the set in all shapes and sizes, whole and dismantled into parts in perfect condition and sunk. The scene where the liner is shown at the bottom of the ocean are combined with the shots of the real Titanic and its smaller model. And you can hardly tell one from the other. And from the epic moment when the ship broke in two, the scaled-down model really almost was broken down. You probably know this scene, even if you haven't seen the movie at all. Of course, there was a chroma key, just like in the making of any other modern movie. There was plenty of green screen. Three, two, one, action! Drop! <laughs> Even the scene where Jack is standing on the head of the liner was created without the sun, sky, sea, or ship. But the actors were hardly uncomfortable about that. After all, they didn't have to fight zombie dogs. This is what I think I look like fighting zombie dogs. And this is what I actually look like fighting zombie dogs. But let's be honest, Titanic's budget was big enough to afford a bunch of cool stuff. But what do you do if all you have at your disposal is a broken tripod, a smartphone, and a green rag? Godwin Josiah and his cousins would say, shoot science fiction. Teenagers from Nigeria have already made several short films and have no intention of stopping. Slow internet, nonsense, power outages, that's nothing. These guys are learning how to create visual effects from YouTube video tutorials and are very hardworking. They want to make the most ambitious movie in Nigeria and possibly beyond. Okay, now it's rather clear how to make movies without cool cameras. But how do you teach kids how to use a computer if you don't have one? Richard Apire at Kodo knows the answer. This teacher from a school in the Republic of Ghana teaches information and communication technology without using a computer simply because the school doesn't have one. He has to make the best of it and draw programs interface on the blackboard. Students diligently copy them in their notebooks. It's worth saying that he's drawn a computer screen on the board not once or twice. It lasts for six whole years, until at last the pictures of the lesson went viral in the social network and reached Microsoft. Then, as usual, the magic of the internet kicked in and the school got two whole computer labs. The students got a laptop each and Akoto got the opportunity to devote all this time to teaching, growing and doing other cool stuff. Honestly, I admire this guy, although it's pretty hard to imagine what it's like not having a computer. My problems are simpler like trimming my dog's nails. Normally, dogs aren't thrilled with such a procedure, but a guy named Patrick Pafer found a way to hack his dog. There are special devices for securing a pet, but they're too expensive. So Patrick simply cut holes in an old bag and hung it from a crossbar. You know, the kind you usually use for sports. All that was left was to put the dog inside and everything went just perfectly. The pet seemed so surprised that he didn't even resist, and it gets surprised every time. Look at the expression on its face. But actually, Patrick is quite lucky. He only has a Boston Terrier. Imagine what Percy would need for a white shepherd dog or for a cat. Cats are smart as hell. Not only would they be able to get out of such a construction, but they'd figure out something else like they learned how to use a cooler. And I'm not talking about those little pet coolers that look like regular human coolers. No, the cat would be fine, even with a regular one. Peaches, what are you doing? Peaches. <laughs> Yeah, basically, it's simple. If you press here, the water starts to flow. You know, I think the only reason cats haven't seized power on the planet because they're just plain lazy. Many people are far away from the brilliance of cats, but some try very hard. Does it work? Well, barely. In 2013, two inmates, Danny Pruvigal and Benjamin Hudon Barbo, decided to escape from a Canadian prison. The plan was cool, even hijacked a helicopter, like in a blockbuster movie. 
the criminals are supposed to climb a rope up to the roof where everything was already prepared and quickly escape. But it turned out that climbing steep surfaces isn't that easy unless you're Tom Cruise. The climb to the prison roof took much longer than planned, and they still couldn't finish it. In the end, both criminals were simply lifted on a rope and epically carried outside the prison grounds. Now, you may be wondering, where were the guards all this time? Well, they just didn't have the weapons to stand up to armed criminals. All they can do is watch, probably taking bets, but no amount of persistence helped the fugitives. They were caught after just a few hours and returned to custody. At least, they took a helicopter ride. You know what the big mistake those two made was? They picked the wrong escape technique. Helicopters for amateurs. Professionals use a bulldozer. August 1995 12 prisoners escaped from custody in Copenhagen after a bulldozer broke through a fortified prison wall, literally broke through it. Look at that. The bulldozer didn't just create a huge hole in the wall that separated the yard and the road. It destroyed some of the stonework. We don't know if there was anybody in the bulldozer when it hit the wall or if anyone was injured in the collision, but somehow a cameraman from a local TV station happened to be nearby and filmed the prisoners running free out of the cloud of dust. These guys are the guards, and they don't understand what happened either. The footage was very, very juicy, and yet such a coincidence did seem suspicious. That's what the police decided to and detained the cameraman. Really imagine for a second that there was nobody in that bulldozer. The uprising of the machines went a little, well, not according to plan. What's next? Backo loaders starting to climb into the trucks themselves. Hey, I was just kidding but they are really good at it. They crawl up close, lift up, push off with the bucket and climb. Imagine the excitement of the man who did it first. Sure, climbing up somewhere while sitting inside a loader is incredibly cool, but how about climbing a hill on a bicycle without moving a muscle? Ha, easy. If you use the tramp bicycle lift. <laughs> Look at that. That it was invented and installed in 1993 in Trondheim. It's similar to a ski lift where the skier rides on their own holding on to the handles with their hands. Only in the lift you have to hold on to the special ledge with your foot, which goes up the mountain while sitting on the bicycle. The length of the escalator is 130 meters and it can carry six cyclists per minute at a speed of two meters per second. And since 2013, it's been completely free. Anyone can use it. The main thing is to not accidentally lose your balance on the road. It's such a common mistake that there's information about it on Wikipedia. However, people in general are quite unstable creatures, and some seriously use it, especially in sports. So in 2015, during a Bundesliga match, one of the teams got the right for a penalty. And while some players were complaining to the referee, goalkeeper Marwin Hitz was busy doing his job. Yep, you got it right. He was stomping around to mess up the turf. The amazing thing is that it worked. At the most decisive moment, the opponent slipped in and the goalkeeper caught the ball. Hits makes the save. Afterward, he said that he just wanted to confuse everybody but would never do that again. Oh, what a good guy. Actually, the history of football is hundreds of years old and a lot has happened in that time. But some things just deserve to be remembered for a long time. When a fan of the Turkish football club, Denis Lisper, was banned from the stadium for a year, he must have been upset, but he didn't surrender. As they say, if life gives you lemons, sell them and use the money to rent a crane and this guy actually rented it, then climbed to the top to watch the game from there, armed with a giant flag in the colors of the club. Damn genius. But the police didn't appreciate the genius and removed the fan from his private box, not even allowing him to watch the game. Now let's leave sports aside and take a road trip. Some roads are just designed to confuse you, tangled junction, obscure signs, a sad nav that doesn't work, and there you are at the Mexican border with no idea how that happened cause you were going to Chicago. Richard Ankerum, an artist, once found himself in about the same situation. He got lost on one of California's highway. But instead of grumbling and complaining somewhere on Facebook, he made his own clarifying sign then put it in the right place. The good part is none of the officials even noticed that there was one more sign on the freeway. It was there for nine months before Richard leaked it to the press. But even after that, the sign wasn't taken down. It hummed for another eight years until the California Department of Transportation officials removed the sign and replaced it with a new one, officially recognizing the amendment. While we are on the subject of car problems, here's another one, big parking lot. You know the feeling of circling between the lines trying to find a free space. 
In South Korea, they figured out how to deal with it, and it's so simple it's genius. No electronics, just a brightly colored balloon, and a solid attachment in each parking space. The balloon goes down when the car occupies the space, and then comes back up when the space is vacated. I told you it's genius. Now drivers can see the brightly colored balloons from afar and not waste time. No more laps of honor around the parking lot. While your kids scream and demand to go to the food court immediately, you can save fuel too. No amount of saving even the craft of savings compares to what comedian Gary Vider's father did. When the future stand-up comedian was a child, his father passed him off as a kid reporter from Sports Illustrated Kids magazine. No one thought to check this information and Gary and his father attended many games for free. They also met celebrities including Shaquille O'Neal, Cindy Crawford, Richard Gere, and Michael Jordan. The scams continued until Gary became too old, and yes, just in case don't try this again, tricks from 20 years ago won't work anyway. See you later.